everyone, this is Rick with XYZ Modeling and Graphics. And today we're going to be looking at month number 9 and 10. I know I'm a little bit behind on these videos. But I've been busy. I've been uh, working on my R6 droid. And here he is with his head swiveling around and we get some some remote control action going on there. So, been working pretty hard. And uh, I recommend this website to anybody who's interested in building something like this. It was a, a lot of fun. But let's go ahead and get started. We're with the uh, month number nine. Um, we're starting off with issue number 33. And some of these things are familiar from the earlier issues. We're putting together the laser emitter assembly which is pretty much just the two halves of the casing for the LED, which you have to kind of fish the wiring through. Just a little bit of orientation there to figure out which way around it goes. But um, wiring protrudes out of the middle of that. No CA glue required, really. The uh, Compression fit is reliable enough, and once you get this blaster cannon base together, um, that gonna it's gonna hold that whole assembly in place. So I'm not too worried about using CA glue. Additionally, we've got some uh, some framing pieces for the fuselage, and D'Agostini must have heard my complaint because. I was praying to work on something other than a wing or an engine. So they included some additional framing pieces in this issue, which was a nice little break from the monotony, if you know what I mean. So yeah, just a uh, few screws put this thing together and we've, uh, we've actually started adding to this fuselage and in the upcoming issues we'll be pressing forward with that as well adding additional framing and here we are with issue number 34 so let's go ahead and open up our packaging do a quick little inventory as per usual and we're going to start off by building the upper port laser cannon and there's just a couple of pieces there at the tip of the barrel they got to compress together next is to insert the fiber optic filament through the cannon So basically we're just completing this cannon assembly here. Not too difficult. Wanted to use a little CA glue on the end there. The reflector at the tip of the barrel was wanting to fall out of there. All right, let's go ahead and get going with issue number 35. So we're just going to zoom right through these because I've got two months to get through here. So I apologize for these moving too quickly. So we've got more framing pieces for the fuselage. So we're going to start beefing this thing up. But first, we're going to place some hydraulic pieces into the canopy now this is pretty challenging in the sense that there are four hinge pins that need to be inserted in order for these hydraulic type pieces to fit into place and it was an exercise in patience I will tell you that right now I mean these little pins which are acting as hinges are very very small I would say smaller than a grain of rice and they're metal and they will slip into the holes 
provided for them and kind of compress inside. There's a bulge on the top of the pin that once it's inserted into the hole deep enough, that bulge will compress into the hole and kind of stay in place. But these things are really, really tiny. And shoot, I bet this issue is <laughs> took me the longest out of out of the the whole two months that I'm doing here because it, these things were just so small. I can't emphasize that enough. And I've got the tweezers out, but uh, I do finally find my rhythm here. And we'll get the others in there. But yeah, uh, D'Agostini loves to give you these little tedious problems to deal with. And God help you if you drop this thing on the floor. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting on a hardwood floor there. And I bet you I would still have a hard time finding it. So be very, very careful not to drop these things. So here we are. I'm still working on this thing. And there I walk away for a second. Oh, I was getting my needle nose so I can compress this pin in, which isn't the, the best tool to use. I actually recommend you use like a small set of vice grips or something because you want even pressure on both sides of that hinge. Otherwise, it may not push through properly. So finally got that. There's some Lego looking pieces here that you have to deal with. And those just compress together. Just the needle nose pliers, I'm using them. Uh, it's not a great idea to use them because you want even pressure on both sides and you know, you're delivering it at an angle when you're using those things. So I was making things more difficult on myself than they should have been. But uh, I do eventually correct it. And <laughs> I have to speed this video up just to make this even remotely bearable. I apologize. I'm just sitting there watching me ball up this little thing with my fingertips. So um, we're getting somewhere here. Okay. So now we're going to be adding the hydraulics those just fit right in there and uh, next so that's it for the canopy so next we're going to be adding the extension framing to the canopy um, and these things are mirror images of one another. So you just got to make sure they're oriented properly. And you've got the, the ribs of the fuselage to assemble as well from in descending order from largest to smallest. So we'll be using using our number two screws there start putting these pieces together. I noticed something too about these, this framing material that they're using. And it is some type of metal for sure, but it is very, it's very easy to bend. Like if, if, if I wanted to, I could easily snap it in, in half. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're putting these things together, like you don't want to over crank your screws, um, because this metal is still very soft and, um, the screws would, would strip out these holes very easily. So just put place and just enough pressure that these pieces are firmly in place and no once they're you know keep checking that as you're tightening and once it feels like 
it's firm enough, then just stop right there. Don't don't bother to continue to try to press that screw in there. So this thing is coming together. Kind of reminds me of a, a Viper fuselage from Battlestar Galactica a little bit. The way this thing is shaped. The final picture will kind of show you what I mean, but it's got that kind of wedged shape that the Viper has, which is another really cool ship. I'd love to do a, a Viper model, a large scale Viper model. I think that would be a lot of fun. So yeah, there's uh, quite a few little contact points on this fuselage that you have to make sure you're screwing in and you're basically forming the top half of the X-Wing fuselage. Next is a little black detail piece for the inside of the cockpit. It is associated with the targeting computer and that will rest behind the cockpit position. Okay, here we are with issue number 36. Got some very interesting pieces here. Uh, we have an additional cockpit detail piece, a few cockpit detail pieces. We'll go ahead and get our screws organized and all our little parts inventoried here. So the first thing we're going to deal with is the targeting computer console that's right behind the pilot seat. And there's some uh, little press in type details that, that uh, don't call for CA glue and I'm not using any, but I might change that uh, later on. I don't know. For now, I'm just trying to get through this video. So now we're just adding a few more extra detail pieces. Not too difficult. I got a little angled piece for the, for the targeting computer itself. That's sort of on a hinge. You just have to align it properly. And there will be a couple of screws that will hold this in place. Um, we're going to take our first black assembly piece and place it on top of this larger assembly. And we'll use a couple of XW02 screws to keep that in place. It's nice to see we're adding some detail to the cockpit. It's all black, so it'll eventually get painted and, and look a little bit more uh, multifaceted, I should say. Um, but uh, we'll get on that in later episodes. So now we're putting together a few additional assembly or framing pieces for the fuselage. This is uh, actually creating the joint that connects the the fuselage section that we assembled in our last video and connecting it to the to the uh, to the base plate that we've had since our first month. 
So it'll all join together and make one long fuselage section, which is pretty cool. You can start to see this X-Wing finally come, come to life. So you got to attach this from the bottom. So you'll, you'll bring that section around beneath it and you will uh, hook it up on the top plate. So you have to flip this thing around. The, the, you want to screw it from the bottom position or actually this is the top position. I apologize. But you can see that D'Augustini just does a fantastic job with the framing. So we just tighten this down, make sure everything's nice and firm. Now we've got a new size of screws here called the X7s. And I do not have a separate container for those yet, so um, I'm just putting them off to the side here. But I believe we're going to be using every one. So at this point, we're going to be securing our framing, new framing sections to the original frame that we had put together with these X7 screws. And it really beefs up this frame and very durable look appears to be durable like I said before the metal is pretty soft I mean if you wanted to break this for God knows whatever reason you would easily be able to again we're gonna be securing the framing that we've that we put together just uh, just recently. And there's a lot of points here. Uh, they gave us, I think there's eight screw points or contact points that you have to address with these seven screws. And like I said before, you want to make sure they're tight enough to hold everything firmly together and no gaps but you want to be very careful not to over tighten. Once you see your pieces come together as they should without any wiggling around, then that's where you want to stop. You don't want to, you don't want to over crank. Trust me. So that about wraps it up. Just double checking all my screws, make sure everything looks good. And there you have it, our finished frame for the fuselage. All right, let's get going with month number 10. Starting off with issue number 37. It's pretty obvious what we've got to work with here. We've got the nose cone, which is a really cool detail there. And a, another piece that that nose cone will fit onto. Additionally, we've got a antenna that we're going to be installing. So you can remotely operate your X-Wing, the open and close functionality. And I think the R2 head turns and turn the lights on and off. It should be pretty cool. And you've got a switch that's also being installed. So you're just going to be starting off with a couple screws and to join those two separate pieces together. And it's uh, pretty well designed. Got a little bit of a seam at the connection point there, but actually it looks really clean. I don't think I'll have to worry about trying to hide that seam at all. We 
going to take our antenna, put that into position. We've got these little clips that screw over top of the two electronic pieces we're putting in just to hold them into place. No CA glue required, which you would never want to do anyway. To You would not want to use uh, CA glue to hold down any of your electronics. Hot glue works pretty good, but CA glue would deteriorate the insulation on your wiring and that would not be good. So not much to do on this issue. We're just securing these two pieces in place, a switch and the antenna. All right, issue number 38. So we're going to be working on our wing, another wing. And all this is very familiar by now. There's a few common detail parts that we're used to putting on to this wing. Nothing too challenging. I do like to use CA glue to hold those major pieces, detail pieces in place. Next, you got a couple of smaller, much smaller detail pieces, which to me are a little silly. Why these things weren't part of the original molding is, is uh, funny to me. It doesn't add that much more realism. I just don't understand it other than just giving you busy work, which we all know and love. So um, I did do a little experiment here, and it looks like there could be some metallic. We were talking about whether or not these little power couplings, as they call them, are actually some sort of magnetic uh, type of material or paint. And I, just for fun, just placed one over the magnet that's in the nose cone there, and it seemed to be propelling them. So... The polarity is if they if they're super light, so I, I I'm not really sure, but I think that it was propelling them instead of attracting them. So whatever other pieces we use, hopefully, um, is the negative polarity of these magnets because they don't want to come together; they want to uh, repel each other. And that about finishes it. Our trailing edge piece there that I had to clip down as I've done in earlier issues just to keep all that flush. Okay, let's get going with issue 39. So with issue number 39, we're just continuing on with our wing. We got the outer framing for it, which we'll be addressing first and these just screw into place pretty simple I was flipping through these magazines and there's some really beautiful artwork in some of the in some of these issues so I know I'm, I'm rushing through this video and we're getting straight to the build portion of it, but it is enjoyable to go back and, and look at some of the artwork and, you know, trivia that's associated or the information that's in this magazine, especially as it re pertains to the original trilogies. And it's just uh, really, really interesting stuff. So... We've got some detail pieces that are going in. And this will, this detail will be seen when we place a skin on. There was openings in those skins, as we, we all know. 
that will allow us some visibility to the detail that we're applying right now. So the effort doesn't become a complete waste of time. Okay, our final issue, issue number 40 for month 10. Can't believe it's been 10 months already. So here we are, we're, we're with the engine casing or the engine mount for the wing that we're putting together. The lower starboard engine, I do believe. And there's some little details that are similar to the other engine mounts we've assembled in the past. Just got to get those guys together. Nothing too challenging, just fits right in there. And is seated with a, a screw. I thought there were two, but there's actually only only one. So that completes issue number 40. Here's where we are with the X-Wing right now. Pretty cool. We'll get a nice little view of the cockpit here and that targeting computer. Thanks everybody for joining me. We'll see you in a couple weeks with Mark number 11.